This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. Dennis Lynn Raider, also known as BTK, an abbreviation he gave himself that stands for Bind, Torture, Kill, is an American serial killer who murdered at least 10 people in Wichita and Park City, Kansas, between 1974 and 1991. His victims were often bound, sometimes with objects from their own homes, and either suffocated with a plastic bag or manually strangled with a ligature. BTK also stole keepsakes from his female victims and sent taunting letters to police and media outlets. We'll talk about him and so much more today on Two Murder Morons. Hey! <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the show. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me, as always, is my good buddy, Mike. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And this is Two Murder Morons. Welcome to the show. Happy to have you here. Thank yeah. you for tuning in. Yeah. Hey, glad you showed up. Yes, and I'm not going to mess up today. Really? I'm going to do the disclaimer right off the bat. Oh, okay. Because the past couple episodes, you've caught me towards the end, and I've had to yeah a little dry erase board I'll put on the screen here real quick. Yeah. I am blazing ahead of you in errors you this are. season. Well, you know, but some people are it just falls that way. <laughs> yeah, apparently it falls that way for me a lot. I know. So uh, our little disclaimer here is if you are listening to our show right now, you're going to get pretty pissed off in the next few minutes because we're going to start talking about pictures. So if you'd like to see the pictures we're talking about, uh, we are a video podcast that is available on YouTube and Spotify. Um, and of course, if you're watching and you'd rather listen because you're on a car trip or something like that, we are available on all the major podcast platforms. There's a disclaimer. How'd I do? Did all right. Surprised. <laughs> well, way to go. We got it. I, I am actually shocked that we haven't, on like the podcast platforms, that we haven't gotten a comment yet that's like, why do you guys keep talking about what's your look? Oh, look at this guy. Look at what he's wearing. Look at this picture. Yeah. Because you... I, that bothers me when I listen to a podcast. But yeah. then if I find out, oh, I get it. It's like a video podcast. Yeah, but too. it sucks what they, if they don't have a video podcast because then you're left like, well, what, the fuck, what are they looking at? Right. That's true. There are some I that I've listened to. I get on my phone and be like, what the hell are they talking about? Let me see if I can find that. Right. <laughs> Jesus. There are a few I've listened to that don't have a video version. Yeah. But they talk about stuff all the time. Like, look at this picture. And you're yeah, like, we like, can't see it. Yeah, dude, explain it a little bit more. Where, yeah. where, where can I go? Well, hopefully we explained it well. I think you did. If you want to watch YouTube, Spotify. That's yeah. where we're at. That's where we're at. That's it. That's it, Jack. What's that? That's it, Jack. Oh, I thought you were talking about the dog, Jack. Oh, no, no. Just, he's down. Don't wake him up, damn it. He's finally asleep. I know he's and asleep. He's, he's done digging his hole. He's good. Digging his hole through the carpet. Down through the carpet. So today, this is a big one. Big one. BTK, man. Oh, yeah. This this is a yep, pretty so, infamous case. Well, it's got shows all over Netflix still about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you just Google BTK or Dennis Rader, yeah, you will find a plethora of documentaries oh, yeah. and videos and podcasts and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Movies, whatever. Oh, yeah. Yep. 100%. Yep, they made their money on him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he is, uh, you know, his story starts like a lot of serial killers. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll dive into this, obviously, but, you know, the... In the beginning, the killings and stuff really aren't that unusual or outside the realm of what other things Correct. are. Correct. It's kind of like who he is in his community and especially how he ends up getting caught. Yeah. And with like the taunting letters to police and stuff like that kind of adds that almost like Zodiac edge to him mm -hmm. or whatever. But uh, very interesting. Yeah, he's a like very interesting, very weird guy. Yeah. Oh, you'll see. If oh, you're yeah. watching, you'll see. He, oh, yeah. he definitely looks like a... Yeah, he's a strange, strange bird. Yeah. But what do, you, what do you think? Should we dive right in? Let's get her done dead. All right, let's do it. All right, well, let's take a trip. Last week, we were in Indiana, and now we're in Pittsburgh, Can Pittsburgh Kansas. Pit There's a Pittsburgh, Kansas? Yep. Okay. 
I'm hey, that's what it's that's what it's on the, on the on this document. I'm guessing it's a very small town. I would say it's probably yeah, probably is. I've never heard of it really. I've never heard of Pittsburgh. The only thing I mean, Kansas. I mean, Wichita. Yeah, that's the only city I know of. Yeah, Kansas. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me check. Yep. Yep. Well, I just have to, I just have to think here. You know. So anyway, well. Let's dig it. Let's get into it. Meat potatoes. Here we go. Let's do it. Yep. He was the eldest of four sons. Dennis Lynn Raider, born obviously in Pittsburgh, Kansas, on March 9th, 1945, to bookkeeper Dorothy, Dorothy, I hope I said it right. Sometimes it's Dorothy, Dorothy, uh, I don't know. Dorothy, I'm going with that because that's how I know it. Yeah. We'll May Raider, uh, Knee Cook. Got the little knee thing in there. Dorothy May Raider, Knee Cook. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, September 17th, 1925 to October 14th, 2007. And Kansas gas service worker, William Elvin Rader. November oh, my birthday. 1922. Right, really? You, do, let's do it again? You're going to give your birthday out on the air? <laughs> yeah, I was born in 1922. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. 1922. I'll, I'll bleep it for I you again, like I'll I did on the last one. I know. Uh, and to, uh, through December 27th, 1996. Damn. Didn't live that. Well, I mean, I guess that is quite a while. Yeah. Anyway, Raider grew up in uh, Wichita with, with both parents. Uh, both parents worked long hours and made little attention to their children at home. As an adult, Raider recalled feeling ignored by his mother. And Here we so go. So it begins. Yep, there it goes. Yep, it started, yep. started a long time ago. Yep. Damn. Parents, PSA. Yeah. Pay, show some, your kids some love, yeah, something. Pay yeah, attention to them. Yeah, spend some time. Yeah. Because cool. this is what they yeah. have the potential to turn into. Yeah. Mm. So from a young age, Raider harbored sadistic sexual fantasies about torturing trapped and helpless women. He also exhibited zoo Did sure. I say that right? Zoo-sadism. zoo yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah. By torturing, killing, and hanging small animals. Raider acted... Acted out sexual fetishes for voyeurism. I don't know about that. Here we go. Jesus. <laughs> Autoerotic asphyxiation, cross dressing. Mm. Man. He often spied on female neighbors while dressed in women's clothing, including women's underwear that he said stolen and masturbated with ropes or other bindings around his arms and neck. Oh, wow. So he's. Oh, yeah. He's full on. He's already <laughs> gone. I mean, like, he's. Trans- this is, yeah, this is from a young age. Yeah, he's transforming quickly. Yes. Mm. So years later, during his cooling off periods between murders, Raider would take pictures of himself wearing women's clothes. Okay. No. Yep. This is this is the cooling off period. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, like wearing women's clothes and a female mask while bound. I mean, that's I, every- like binding himself. Yeah. I mean, Dang. everybody looks into that kind of stuff. It's yeah, Did, not me, but somebody out there does. Okay, obviously if somebody has oh, done this. He's got it from somewhere. Oh yeah, I mean it's a thing. Yeah, it, it's a you know, the. Um, I, I sound like an idiot now. What's it called? Um, well, it's like the urine guy. You know, the urine liquor. Well, that's a little more extreme. I think the being bound during intercourse thing is a pretty common fetish. Yeah. Well, I, I, the strangulation part of it is, I know. Yeah, well, and I think just that, why can't I think of the term for it? They sell all the stuff at Spencer's, the kits to do it with rope. What do you call that? Um, uh, S&M. S&M, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you know, he didn't call it S&M. <laughs> no. He later admitted that he was pretending to be his victims as part of a sexual fantasy. So he was doing it to get himself off. Think. He's pretending Pretend to be be his own victim victim so he can get off. That's craziness. Yes. That is craziness right there. Yeah. However, uh, he kept his sexual proclivities well hidden and was was widely regarded in the community as normal, polite, and and well-mannered. Which, this reminds us of some others. Oh, yeah. You hide their, I mean, Ted Bundy is the classic Mm -hmm. gentleman, charming I I was gonna say good looking. Ted Bundy, I think, was good looking. Dennis Rader. Yeah, Dennis Rader is not. No. Well, here's a young here's a photo of him here. I mean yeah, he's all right. 
As a young guy. Yeah, as a young guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all you see in the beginning. Well, right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, and, sure. Nobody and, can foresee it down in the future. Right. And yeah. then they grow up. Yeah, exactly. Saying it, you know. I mean, when I was younger, I mean, I looked, I was okay. But oh, you I, still. I matured into a very sexual, <laughs> well, you know, look at me. Come on, dude. I'm like, I'm like a, I'm like a god. In my, sure. in my, <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you say, look at me. I'm like a god. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Man, you know I wouldn't talk like this at home. <laughs> you wouldn't? <laughs> I never. I would just come up. With this Why way. not? Because you know you'd get shot down really yeah, quick. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. Good to talk with it. If I'm, I'm away from there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so hey, let's get on with this. Okay. Because nobody cares about me. Um, after. <laughs> Oh, I got to get my thoughts back on track. Oh, man. You are in so much trouble when she watches this episode. I know, I know, I know, I know. So after graduating from Wichita Heights High School, Raider attended Kansas Wesleyan University. He reserved, he received only mediocre grades and dropped out after one year. Yeah, typical. Um, then Raider served in the United States Air Force from 1966 to 1970. Okay, so yeah. he's in the Air Force. Yep, that's good. Serves sir, country. On discharge, he moved to Park City, a sub suburb of Wichita, where he worked in the meat department of a IG, of an IGA supermarket, where his mother was employed as a bookkeeper. Man, IGAs rock. Uh, they do, but I'm I'm kind of in the meat department. Yeah, I know. Like, so he's learning how to carve. Yeah. Although I don't think he gets into that as a murderer. I don't know. He's more into the strangulation, more the strangulation, but still like dealing with dead animals, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and plus he's working with his mom, right? Same place his mom's at. Yeah. Well, he's he still probably kind of wants that attention. Oh sure. So maybe maybe he can maybe get it at work. So anyway, so our good man, uh, Raider here, he married uh, Paula Dietz. Boy, boy, she probably does how she was getting into. On May twenty second, nineteen seventy one. There's a photo of them together. Yep, that's a nice photo of her. Well, I. Know. I for some reason, it's interesting. I, I could not find an I don't, unblurred photo. Yeah, of I don't her. think she wanted to. Yeah, would you want to be? Well, what's what I think is interesting is like their baby isn't blurred out. Well, but but she is. Yeah, but I mean, the baby doesn't look like. That's true. Like, who's going to recognize? Yeah, who's going to recognize the baby? Yeah. yeah, I get that. Yeah, but yeah, I could not find a. Hmm. Maybe she just didn't want to. Well, let me let me rephrase that. I found some photos that I think might have been her, but I, but like the websites they were from, I couldn't verify. Yeah. yeah, because it wasn't with him. They were like pictures of just her, and it's like, is that really her? You know what I mean? Could have been him. So this was the well. That's true, but well, no. I mean, you could tell from okay. the face right. it okay. wasn't him, but you know, yeah, it's it was hard to find a even this really. I mean, this mm -hmm. is kind of the picture that comes up everywhere, but yeah, it's yeah. blurred. In every single instance, so yeah, he was balding too. Ugh, Already, yep. I'm kind of kind of forehead like you. I'm kind of got the widow's peaks. Yeah, you do a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm good. <laughs> you are good. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so was, he married her in 1971. If she only knew, they had two children, uh, Carrie and Brian. Um, we we'll probably never see what they look like. Obviously, <laughs> would you want her to be known? Actually, I think we are going to see the daughter. Do we later because she has done some interviews about oh, okay. what it's like now that oh. she's an adult knowing who her father was. That's yeah. sad. Um. Anyway, so he uh, he attended Butler County Community College in El Dorado, earning an associate degree in electronics engineering technology in 1973, and then he enrolled at Wichita State University and graduated in 1979 with a bachelor of science degree majoring in administration of justice. Administration of Justice. Yes. Okay. Wow. Man, what's the lead of department? Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. It's a kind of an odd one. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Raider initially worked as an assembler for the Coleman Company, an outdoor supply company. Uh, makes a lot of camping gear. 
Okay. Yep. Yeah. Coleman, if Coleman. you haven't heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coleman Lantern and all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically a brand that's stamped on anything camping yeah. or hiking. Yeah. Well, the, I don't know if I want to say cheap brand, the oh, affordable yeah. brand. I think they, in the day they were. They were the, yeah. The shit of yeah. the gear. Now yeah. it's kind of like, it's like what you find at Walmart. Yeah. The camping section yeah. is all Coleman stuff. True. But if you go to like Gander Mountain or something, they're. There's more like robust. Yeah. Anywho, sorry, yeah, yeah, get yeah. off track. Yeah, I get it. Um, he then worked at the Wichita-based office of ADT Security Services from 1974 to 1988. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where he installed security alarms. Kind of goes into his trade. I was going to say, interesting that someone that's into voyeurism gets yes. into installing security systems and probably security camera systems. Yes, and probably knows some codes to get into some houses. Right. Yes. Which I've never ever let anybody install cameras in my house. I've always had that fear of... Oh, I have, yeah. You know? I did it one time, like, when I was, like, the first house I ever bought, because I didn't know anybody. You know, I was young. Yeah. I had, uh, what, an ADT, Nivent or something? I think that's what it, the name of it. Uh, yeah. But ever since then, I've always installed my own. Yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah, especially now with Ring and... All the, you know, yeah, it's easier. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, in many cases, his clients were concerned homeowners seeking uh, security from his own his own killings. Yeah, yeah, because he because his the killings are going on. Yeah, and so people are calling. Well, I need a damn security system. Little do they know. Yeah, he's the one doing it. <laughs> the <laughs> dude showing up to install it. It's a damn killer. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that's why. I mean, if he came to your house afterwards, it's probably why he was able to. He didn't have a whole lot of issues, in the, you know, getting into the house. True, because they all they all would remember him, right? Okay, this is the guy installed. Maybe something's wrong, right? Uh, you know, Raider was a census field operations supervisor for the Wichita area in 1989 for the 1990 federal census. Oh wow! So he did census collection. Isn't that kind of weird? <laughs> that is such a weird, old, like combination of well, things. But I guess in what he was looking for. I mean, it kind of goes along. It's like nosiness, yes. right? Like He's getting into the home, knowing who's in the house. Right. Yeah. Getting to know everything about all the people in his neighborhood, basically. Yeah. Basically, his killing field. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Wow. That's cra- yeah, it is crazy. Mm. So he had, a, he had a wealth of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Um, so in May 1991, Raider became a dog, ca- dog catcher, no. compliance officer in Park City. Yep. <laughs> there he is in uniform. Yep. Kind of sc- He's already scary looking. So, what year is this? Uh, this is 1991. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> already a scary looking dude. <laughs> yeah. In this position, neighbors recalled him as being sometimes overzealous and extremely strict. Okay. So he's one of those. Yes. He's yeah. got himself a badge. Mm-hmm. He's not really like, he's not a cop. No, he's not a cop, but, but he's, he, a, he's a person of authority. Right. He's probably got some power to write tickets for like, Dog related stuff. Yeah. And yeah. he's Mr. Oh, yeah. I'm in I'm in charge. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I feel like those people like that. I feel like I've known a few of those yeah, yeah. myself. Yeah. Same here. Anyway, I order. Um, as well as uh, taking pl- a special pleasure in bullying and harassing single women. <laughs> oh, nice. The dog catcher is yeah. <laughs> bullying and harassing <laughs> single women. Yeah, oh, God. What a winner. Wow. One neighbor complained that Raider killed her dog for no reason. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Uh, so he was a member of Christ Lutheran Church in Wichita. Okay. Obviously, he didn't go to church enough. And at one point, was elected president of the church council. Dang. And he was also a Cub Scout leader. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but... By all outward appearances. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy's a council member in his church. He's yeah. a boy, Cub Scout, Boy Scout leader. Yeah, he works. He does census work. He, uh, he, he work- works for the city as a dog okay. catcher. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's I working. can see why people said, like, kind of, he was respected in his community. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. You know, he's basically leading a normal life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by the 2000s, the public's memories of the murders had begun to fade. Local author Robert Betty, Beatty, I think it's Beatty, began writing a book about the killings after being shocked that many p- young people 
he spoke to had never heard of them mm. as far as like his killings and him and you know so he was feeling a little bit forgotten yes so hungry for attention raider reemerged as btk in 2004 okay after learning that a book was being written couldn't let the attention go somewhere else oh no, no. To, yeah, yeah you got it yeah yep so uh, um, on July 26, 2005, after his arrest, his wife was granted an emergency divorce, uh, waiving the normal 60-day waiting period. Uh, in an interview with ABC News in 2019, Raider's daughter Carrie said she writes to her father and has now for- has now forgiven him. So, um, but still struggles to reconcile her normal childhood with the knowledge of that she was raised by the BTK killer. Yeah, which I'm sure I'm sure for her and her brother that was uh, that is heavy. I can, I can't imagine. Like no. I can't imagine because being you told, had to move. You had to move. You had to get out. Of, you know, you had to re- relocate. Yeah, I couldn't stay there. I could. I just. I just. You know, we kind of talked about this a little bit on one of, on our last yeah. episode about you know. Can you imagine? You know, finding out your spouse is a yeah. killer. Same thing, parents. Like, can you imagine growing mm-hmm. up and and learning? This yeah. is who your father was? Yeah. It was the guy that hugged you and chucked you into bed every night after he just came home from God knows what. Right. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Uh, confirmed murders. On, Jan- on January 15th, 1974, four members of the Otero family uh, were murdered in Wichita, Kansas. The victims were Joseph Otero Sr., 38, Um Julia Marie uh, Otero, 33, uh, Joseph Joey Otero the second nine, and Josephine Josie Otero, 11. Wasn't her body in the basement? Wasn't her the one hanging in the basement? I don't recall for sure. I think it was. Um, their bodies were discovered by the family's three older children who had been at school at the time of the killings. So he- they had to come home and find this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. After his 2005 arrest, Raider confessed to killing the Otero family. Raider claimed that he first targeted the family two months prior to their murders. Oh, wow. So he was scoping them out two months ahead of time? Yeah. Yep. Yep. When he, uh, when he spotted Julie leaving to take her children to school and followed them. Yep. So um, on the morning of January 15th, Raider cut the phone lines and entered the Otero residence when Joey opened the back door for the family dog. Oh wow! Okay, yep. he was ready. Yeah, yeah. Got that. Got that phone line because nobody had cell phones back then. So right. Only communication was. A, a, that was big. You know that hasn't come up in a previous episode, but that was like a big thing back then. Was cut the phone line. Yeah. You're gonna break into a house, cut the phone, line. The phone line. Murder somebody, cut the phone line because they're, you're truly cut off unless yeah. you escape mm-hmm. the house and start screaming or get to a neighbor. You're cut off at that point. Yep. Unless you lived in an apartment building and. Yeah, could, thin walls. Yeah, it could bang on the wall or hope someone could hear you. Yeah, yeah. Raider told the Otero family that he was wanted and he was a wanted man in California before he ordered them to lie on the living room floor at gunpoint. Then he led the family to into a bedroom and bound them with rope he had he had prepared. Uh, Joseph and Joey were on the floor while Julian and Josie were on the bed. The wrists and feet of Joseph and Julie were restrained. Uh, Joseph's head was covered by a plastic bag, which Raider then secured with ropes. But after he chewed a hole in the bag, another bag was tightened over his head, causing him to slowly suffocate to death. Jeez, can you imagine? No. I can't imagine Mm -hmm. suffocating to death. That's Mm -hmm. terrible. Yep. Um, Raider attempted to uh, strangle Julie, and according to Raider, Miss Otero uh, woke back up. She was pretty upset with what was going on. And she asked me to save her son. So I took the bag off. Uh, She screamed, you killed my boy. You killed my boy. After the initial realization and shock, um, she uh, communicated, God have mercy on your soul. And before before I put her down, um, permanently, I read her strangled her to death with rope. Jesus. Yeah. So with both parents uh, dead, Raider then placed uh, another plastic bag with two shirts and a, an additional bag over it on Joey's head and watched as he thrashed about while being suffocated. I mean, you imagine he sat there probably, you know, smoke a cigarette, whatever, take a break from your 
crime and just watch take, a little kid yeah thrash around because i feel it would take it would take a couple minutes i'm assuming oh uh, yeah i would think i mean so. it would take at least one minute i would think it would take a little longer than that yeah but this i guess is his thing right his thing is to yeah, yeah. sit there and watch people it, it, slowly die it's just it's brutal yeah brutal Afterward, uh, Raider led Josie down into the basement where he hung her with the noose from a pipe. Yeah, because she was, I think, the last one they found. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, later, police found uh, Raider's semen near her partially clothed body. Uh, Raider then t- uh, eventually wrote a letter that he stashed inside an engineering book in the Wichita Public Library in October of 1974, d- describing in detail the killing of the Otero family. So he writes he he writes out a description of how he did this, and he just randomly puts it in this engineering book in the library. Mm -hmm. someday someone will find this. Yeah, that's is it scary? It is. You check out that book for a class for school or something. Yeah, and you come across his letter. Yeah, it it, yeah, that's and and kind of risky. Yeah, kind of because what if someone finds it that afternoon, Mm -hmm. and police are on it with. Whatever, you know, I know, oh, yeah. I know right back away. then it's a little more, you know, but it was, it was, handwriting and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like you're kind of being risky by doing that, I would think. You would think so. Plus, if you if it's a small town library, everybody knows who you are, right? That's the guy's a Cub Scout leader, he's also a dog catcher, so obviously, people know who he is, right? I would yeah. think so. And if it's a small town library, it, it, it's, it's probably not packed Mm-mm. with people. So that's what I'm saying. Like, what if someone finds this note and they're like, well, that's weird. Dennis Rader was just in here yeah. in, that, in that section an hour ago. Nope. You know? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. On April 4th, 1974, Rader broke into the Wichita home of 21-year-old Catherine Doreen Bright uh, through her screen door, but was taken aback to discover her 19-year-old brother, Kevin Bright, was also present in the property. He transported Kathy... Uh, or Catherine to another bedroom and tied her down after forcing Kevin, who was being held at gunpoint, to restrain his sister uh, with rope Raider had provided. So he basically had her brother restrain her. Yeah. Made him do, yeah, yeah. start it, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Raider attempted to strangle Catherine to death before stabbing her three times in the back and lower abdomen. Jeez. Um, with, a, with a knife, of course. And when she struggled too much, you know, obviously she was she was fighting him. Oh yeah, yeah. She was struggling, doing whatever. She's trying to stay alive. Yeah, yeah. Kevin was also strangled and shot in the head, but he survived by feigning death and later escaping. Wow. Yeah, that's, shot in the head and then fake fake being dead. Yeah, to, that's that's like a crazy survival story, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, God, I'm so. I was watching some, we were watching a crime show. Yeah. I, I don't know. One of the ones you see on A&E or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but supposedly this guy, they, him and his wife didn't show up for Christmas dinner or whatever. So, you know, family calls, ask police to go over and do a, you know, a well wellness check. Kind of find out, you know, his wife is dead on the couch. and He's back in the bedroom asleep. So they take him down to interview him, and they ask him, you know, what all happened? And he says, well, I don't know. He goes, well, she, he didn't know his wife was dead. That's what he kept saying. And they're like, well, obviously you know this. And he's like, well, no, I don't. He, he goes, he goes, well, what happened to you? He goes, well, they shot me in my eye. And sure enough, they shot his eye out. He used to sit there talking the whole time. Oh, dang. Yeah, they're interviewing him for the murder, thinking he's the one that did it. Come find out. He was shot, too. But you'd never know it. Yeah, that's calmly talking to him. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, I was shot, too. Or was shot? I got shot in the eye. And the cop didn't believe him until he took him down to the hospital, right. and sure enough. Well, I think shock is probably, oh, yeah. probably plays a big role there. It would have to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, God, it would have to be. Yeah. You know, not to get off track, years ago I worked at a hospital, and a very busy county hospital. Oh, yes. And uh, the, the check-in area, the ER, 24-7, uh, at least 50 people at all times oh, yeah. waiting to be seen. So the process was you walked in and there was this desk and they had all these paper pads that were little triage pads. Because mm-hmm. with it being a county hospital in a big city, you know, people would come in because they had the flu. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Earache, so, whatever. So these pads had, you know, write your name, 
what what's going on with you? You know, people oh, I have diarrhea, which, you know, should you really be going to the emergency room? That's a whole nother story. Yeah. But anyway, this one night I, I noticed the nurse over there flipping out like, oh, my God. And she, you know, she's Mike, Mike, you know, she's calling this name. And it's because this guy walked in and, you know, they're busy. Oh, you fill the form out. Oh, OK. And he wrote his name, shot in the leg, put it in the stack. And he went and sat down in the waiting room. And was just going to sit there and wait. And, you know, luckily it wasn't too long after, you know, they're flipping through these to triage everybody. Yeah. They're like shot in the leg. Like, why didn't this guy come in and say like, I, well, I've been shot, you know? Yeah. He's trying to be, trying to be respectful. Yeah. He he was being, he was very, very respectful, respectful. Yeah. But he was just sitting over there bleeding all over the floor. Yeah. Like he's probably afraid they yell at him. Good Lord. And nurses are. True. Yeah, no, we know. love nurses. Oh yeah. We're just, there's some. Before we get a bunch of hate comments. I'm married to one. We, well, that and, I mean, we both kind of have a history yes, of, yes. of knowing some nurses. So yes. they get the joke. We're yeah. sorry if you're a nurse. Yeah, yeah. I'm, we, didn't, I'm, I'm, we didn't mean to talk shit. Yeah, I'm married to one. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Whew. Let's get off of that topic. Okay. So on March 17th, uh, 1977, uh, 25-year-old Shirley Ruth Relford was found dead in her home in Wichita. Raider was pursuing Relford and located her by following her five-year-old son to her home. So he followed her boy. Yeah. Um, Relford had not been feeling well and had sent the boy out for soup. Uh, Raider entered the, re- the residence and pulled a handgun out from under his jacket, frightening the family. After tying up three ch- her three children and locking them in a bathroom, Raider took Relford to the back bedroom. Um had restrained Shirley, and while she uh, vomited before tying her legs to her bedpost, then he strangled her with rope after placing a plastic bag over her head while her children screamed and banged down the hallway. Damn. Banging on the door. Ugh. So similar to the Otero murders, Raider intended to murder Relford's children, although they were ultimately able to escape before he could do so. So they got out. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, they're gone. Yeah. So that's a close call. Yeah, but good, I'm glad they got out of it. Oh, yeah. I hate kids' yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Oh, So when uh, Raider noticed 25-year-old Nancy Joe Fox going into her home in Wichita, he marked her as a potential victim and began stalking her. On December 8th, 1977, uh, Raider knocked at her door. When nobody answered, he cut the phone lines before breaking in to wait for Fox in her kitchen. Fox's murder would be described by Raider as what I call a perfect, perfect hit. This excited him. Oh, yeah. This hit. Although she gave me a lot of verbal static, she cooperated, and she didn't fight me. I had complete control of her. That's why it was one of the more enjoyable kills, as I call them. Raider killed Fox by striking her with his belt on her bed before she died, Raider told her that he was responsible for the prior Otero murders. The following day, Raider called police from the phone booth, telling them they would find Fox's body at her home. So here he starts with kind of the taunting. Yes. Or that, this one maybe not so much taunting, but that whole, like, the need to, like... He wants people to know. That, and he, like... I'm sure he's getting something out of he's the one that contacted police. Oh, yeah. He had contact with police. Yeah. They're not going to catch him. It's a phone booth. Mm -hmm. But, like, he's the one that got to his voice. You know what I mean? I'm giving them a clue, kind of. Oh, yeah. Like that weird. Oh, yeah. Mm. So on February 10th, 1978, Raider sent another letter to television station Cake. K-A-K-E. Cake. Cake. In Wichita. Claiming responsibility for the murders of the Oteros, Bright, uh, Vian Relford, and Fox. He suggested many possible names for himself, including BTK. He demanded media attention in this second letter saying how much or how many do I have to kill before I get a name in the paper or some national attention. Dang. Wow. Attention whore. Big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the others got a name. Son of Sam, you know. Yep. Where's my name at? Wow. A poem was enclosed titled, Oh, Death, Oh, Death to Nancy. A parody of the lyrics to the American folk song, Oh, Death. In letter, 
In a letter, he claimed to be driven to kill by Factor X, which he characterized as a supernatural element that also motivated Jack the Ripper, Son of Sam, and the Hillside Stranglers. Okay, so he's comparing himself, Mm -hmm. and he's saying this X thing is is what they all have in common or whatever. Yeah. Mm. He also asked for police to send him a hidden message uh, in in response and with the knowledge of that Raider watched Cake, uh, K-E-K-E, police described, decided to flash a subliminal message during one of the station's evening newscasts. For a split second, the message stated, now call the chief. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So they decide to play this little game mm-hmm. and set up this subliminal message to be flashed. Mm-hmm. And the message they send is, Call the chief. Yep. Now call the chief. And it all, well, and it featured a drawing of an upside down pair of sunglasses, which were found at the Nancy Joe Fox crime scene. Okay. So I'm that, sure he's loving this. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. playing along. Yeah. He's loving it. Yeah, he's got them where he wants them. Yeah. <laughs> they hoped the message would influence Raider to turn himself in, but it was unsuccessful. Of course it well, was. Of course. <laughs> he asked you to do this. <laughs> He didn't say, if you do this, I'll turn myself in. He just said, send me a subliminal message. Yeah. And, and you and you fell for it. And you I mean, did. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just like, it's kind of like a kidnapping. You know, they want money and you give it to them. Right. Then they're going to they're gonna want more money. Yeah, exactly. Because you didn't, you know, well, we decided we're going to hang on to them a little longer because we think we need another ten or $15,000. Right. You know, and then eventually they kill them and they walk away with all this money. Right. Mm. So during this time, Raider was also intended to have killed others, such as 63-year-old Anna Williams, who in 1979 escaped death by returning home much later than expected. Okay, so he's waiting on her. Mm -hmm. And she goes off her schedule a little bit, and it throws him off. So he probably got tired, and he's like, eh, I'm out. Yeah. Um. Raider explained during his confession that he became obsessed with Williams and was absolutely livid. 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 Yeah. Her schedule changed. Yeah, when she evaded him. He spent hours waiting at her home, but became impatient and left when she did not return her home from visiting friends. So she was, you know, playing board games or whatever, hanging out with her buddies. Yeah. Good thing. Yeah, no hurry to get home. Good thing. Hmm. Yeah, I can imagine her hearing that too, you know? Oh, yeah. How creepy would that be? Oh, I don't know, man. It's just... To find out later, like, if you would have went home that night yeah, after I... work. Somebody waiting there for you. That's crazy. Hmm. Marine Hedge, age 53, was found on May 5th, 1985 at East 53rd Street, uh, north between North Webb Road and North Greenwich Road in Wichita. Raider killed her on April 27th and took her dead body to Christ Lutheran Church. Mm. Okay. Where he was the president of the council, of the church council. There he photographed her body in various bondage positions. He's going a little farther now. Yeah. Uh, Raider had previously stored black, plas- uh, stored black plastic sheets and other materials at the church in preparation for the murder and then later dumped the body in a remote ditch. So it's all premeditated. He knew what he was doing. And he's getting bolder and bolder. Mm-hmm. They, you know. Oh, yeah. It starts, they're so cautious. Yeah. Now he's doing it at his damn church where he's the president. Yeah, where he could be caught. I mean, yeah. the minister could come walking in any minute. Right. Hmm. Two women raiders stalked in the 80s, and one whom he stalked in the mid-90s filed restraining orders against him. One of them also changed her address to avoid him. Um, on September 16th, 1986, Raider strangled 28-year-old Vicky Lynn. Uh, it's W-G-E-R-L-E. I don't want to. W- Wagiri? W- yeah. Wagiri? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, to death with, ni- with nylon stocking at her house in Wichita. Raider entered the residence by pretending to be a telephone repairman. See? Yeah. Uh, he rearranged her clothes post-mortem. And he took on, he took a number of photographs of her nude body. Uh, Raider's final victim, sixty-two-year-old Dolores Erlene D. Davis, 
was found dead in February 1, 1991, at West 117th Street North and North Meridian Street in Park City, Kansas. Rager had killed her on January 19th by strangling her with pantyhose. So he's using basically their, he's not carrying anything around now. He's just basically using their pantyhose. Yeah, using what's there. Yeah. yeah, what's available to him. Um, so here's some suspected murders that they, th- they think were his. Okay. Um, on August 23rd, 2023, the Associated Press reported that Rader was considered the prime suspect in two further killings. In Oklahoma and Missouri, authorities discovered possible trophies from victims. After launching a search for evidence at his former Kansas home, uh, resulting in the investigation of Raider's potential involvement in additional uh, unsolved disappearances and murders. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, he was a trophy keeper. Right. You know, I mean, he, he, kept, he kept things from all his stuff. He got a little more graphic as time went on. Right. He wanted the nude photos and he needed something more to remember. Yeah. Um, 16-year-old Cynthia Dawn Kinney was last seen in Osage, Oklahoma, on 23 June 1976 at the Osage laundromat. Witnesses said she left the laundromat at 9.30 a.m. and got into a faded beige 1965 Plymouth Belvedere. Okay. In 2023, Osage Sheriff Eddie Verdon claimed that Rader was identified as a prime suspect after it was determined that Rader was was involved in the Boy Scouts uh, in the area, and when it was learned that Rader had included the phrase bad wash day in his writings. Bad wash day? Yeah. What does that have to do with a laundromat? Oh, duh. I'm stuck on yeah. Boy Scouts. Yeah. I'm I, like, what does that have to do with the Boy Scout? Yep, see? Yeah, yeah. Two murder morons. And a bank was also having a new ADT um, alarms installed across the street from the laundromat when Kenny went missing. Okay, there's the connection there. Yep. Raider was a regional installer for ADT, regional, um, at that time. Furthermore, Raider was allegedly claimed to have fantasized about kidnapping a girl from a laundromat. Okay. Uh, Raider has has denied involvement in the murder. Sheriff Verdon has stated he believes Raider's denial is because being tied to a murder in Oklahoma could open him up to retrial on the death penalty. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Yep. And then here's some cold, here's a cold case. Uh, by 2004, the investigation of the BTK, BTK killer was considered a cold case. Uh, then Raider initiated a series of 11 communications to the local media. Uh, this see, acti- yep. see, he could have just... Yeah, he could have just lived his life and nobody would ever know. If he'd have just... Again, I'm not advocating no, for no, him no, getting no, no, away no. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying his dumbass... If he would have just let it go, yep, we probably still wouldn't know. Exactly, he'd probably still be killed. But they get attention hungry, mm-hmm. and they well, I can't let people forget about me. I can't, you know, I got poke poke the bear, poke yep. the police, poke the media, yep. And here you go stirring shit up again, and it's going to get your ass caught. It's just like with the name thing, you know. Here all these other guys are getting names, and nobody's nobody's giving him a name, right? So he's got to create his own. God, yep, I don't know. This activity led to, uh, directly to his arrest in February of 2005. In March 2004, the Wichita Eagle received a letter from someone using the name Bill Thomas Kilman. The author of the letter claimed that he had murdered Vicki Wegerl oh on September 16, 1986 and include, enclosed photographs of the crime scene and a photocopy of her driver's license, which had been stolen at the uh, time of the crime. I mean, he keeps he keeps things. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much verifying. Yeah, this they, is the real deal because here's yeah, here's all the stuff. Right. Yeah, this pretty much seals it. Uh, before this, it had been it had not been definitively established that Wordle was killed by BTK. Uh, DNA collected from under her fingernails provided police with previously unknown evidence. They then they then began DNA testing hundreds of men in an effort to find the serial killer. Although altogether, more than thirteen hundred DNA samples were taken and later destroyed by the court. Yeah, he see he couldn't go without the credit. Yeah, he couldn't live with himself with them treating that one as a cold case, mm-hmm. knowing he had done it. He Correct. had to let them know he was the one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Well, um, uh, which is good. He, good thing that he did. Right. Or it would be. It probably would be unsolved to this day. Yeah. Well. But jeez, man. Yeah. Uh, in May 2004, Cake, K A K E. You are watching Cake. Yep. That's some. Maybe you want some cake tonight on the five o'clock news of <laughs> Cake. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, I could just, I could just imagine their, uh, their commercials. Oh man. They're probably, yeah. they're probably so, if I can find one to, yeah, especially back, here, especially back in it. the day, you know, in the, oh, oh God. yeah. Um, take a bite out of cake. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So they received a letter with chapter headings for the BTK story, fake IDs and a word puzzle. On June 9th, the package was found taped to a stop sign at the corner of First and Kansas Roads in Wichita. It had graphic descriptions of the Otero murders and a sketch labeled, The Sexual Thrill is My Bill. He just couldn't let it go. He just has to have the attention. Mm -hmm. Also enclosed was a chapter list for a proposed book titled The BTK, BTK Story, which mimicked a story written in 1999 by Court TV crime writer David Lore. Chapter one was titled, A Serial Killer is Born. In July, a package dropped into the return slot at a public library contained more bizarre material, including the claim that he was responsible for the death of 19-year-old Jake Allen in Argonia, Texas. Argonia? Earlier that month. This, this claim was false, and the death was ruled a suicide. So he tried to take credit for something that... Right. Or he's trying to th throw him... Well... I don't think he's trying to throw him off because he likes the attention. He's yeah. just, what was it? He was out of victims to Probably. claim, so he started figuring out yeah, other that. weird cases. And oh, I yeah, that was me too. Yeah, just to kind of throw him off for a little while. What an ass hat! Oh, I know. Yep. After his capture, uh, he admitted in his interrogation that he had been planning to kill again, and he had set a date, October two thousand four, and was stalking his intended victim. In October of 2004, a manila envelope was dropped into a UPS box in Wichita. It had many cards with images of terror and bondage of children pasted on them. Jesus. And a, a poem threatening the life of lead investigator Lieutenant Ken Lanower and a false autogra autograph autobiography with many details about Raider's wife, life. God. <laughs> These details were later released to the public. In December 2004, Wichita police received another package from the BTK killer. This time, the package was found in Wichita's uh, Murdoch Park. It had the driver's license of Nancy Fox, which was noted as stolen from the crime scene, as well as a doll that was symbolically bound at the hands and feet and had a plastic bag over its head. God. Is that not creepy as hell? Yes. Yeah, but he's letting everybody know, hey, I'm still here. I'm still here. Yep. Still alive. Still alive. Yep. Yeah. In January 2005, Raider attempted to leave a cereal box in the bed of a pickup truck uh, at a Home Depot in Wichita, but the box was discarded by the truck's owner. It was later retrieved from the trash after Raider uh, asked what had become of it in a later in a later message. Surveillance tape of the parking lot from that date revealed a distant figure driving a black Jeep Cherokee, leaving the box in the pickup. So now they got your car, dude. Yep, because cameras now. It, modern technology. Things have changed since you, you know, started your line. Yep, and yep. it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch up to them. Right? Yeah, yep. Yep. So in February to the, uh, 2005, more postcards were sent to Cake. K-A-K-E. K-A-K-E. And another cereal box left at a rural location was found to contain another bound doll. Okay. In his letters to police, Raider asked if his writings, if put on a floppy disk, could be traced or not. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Okay, so I knew. Hey. Okay, hang on. So I knew how he got caught, right? Yeah. But I. I but you forgot the idiot part of it. Why? <laughs> Hmm, let me see. Like, I just imagine, like, let's, let's take this out of it, right? Yeah. So you're a serial killer, right? And you've really been wanting to, like, cut your hair at a crime scene. Yeah. So you, in one of your messages to police, you're like, hey, psst. 
if I were to like cut my hair and leave a bunch of my hair at the crime scene, could you identify are, me? Are you gonna be able to identify me? And the police are like, uh, no. Okay. And he goes and yeah, he does it. God, here it is. Uh, good DNA. You had no one else to ask that question. Yeah. Then, like, then, then, then of course, this attorney's going to be saying it was a trap of some sort of bullshit. And, but it's like you, uh, if I give you information on a floppy disk, can you trace it? Yeah. Why are you asking the police that? Again, people, again. <laughs> yeah. I am not, I am not, not advocating. Yeah. No, no, no. no. It's just, I'm not saying it's he stupidity. shouldn't have been caught. I'm just trying. I know this man's mind, mind is out there anyway. I'm just trying to understand why you wouldn't ask somebody else. Yeah. Why you wouldn't even go to your local store that sells floppy disks and yeah. ask one of the people there, like, hey, how do these work? You go to the police and say, can you trace this? And then when they tell you no, you believe them? Yeah. Well, because police don't lie. God, dude. I forgot all about this. But I knew it was a floppy disk that got him, but th yeah. this part is... I forgot that he asked them. <laughs> yeah, it just shows you the. It just shows you the stupid stupidity. I don't think it's stupidity. I think I think he got too bold. I think he was too comfortable, do it, sending the letters, leaving the notes, not True. getting caught. True. That he thought it didn't matter if he what, asked that yeah, question. Yeah. What do you What do you ask him? Uh, the police answers his question in a newspaper ad posted in the Wichita Eagle, saying it would be safe to use the disc. Hmm. On February 16, 2005, Raider sent a purple 1.44 megabyte Memorex floppy disk to Fox affiliate KSAS TV in Wichita. Also enclosed were a letter, a gold colored necklace with a large medallion, and a photocopy of the cover uh, of Rules of Prey, a 1989 novel by John Sanford about a serial killer. I, I still can't get over this. I know. I can't. You were so care. All these years, you were so freaking careful. But he fell out of the news, dude. He just wanted to make sure that everybody knew he was around. I get it, and I and I get that sometimes killers get sloppy. Mm -hmm. But this is a whole new level of freaking oh. stupidity, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, yeah. what did he think they were gonna say? You think? Did he think if it could be traced, they're gonna be like, "Oh, don't do that." Well, he thinks that they're going to be honest. Cops don't lie. But re really, though? But he, but, he, but he doesn't know. He hasn't had any interaction with the cops yet. I'm just saying, dude. Like you, like he's, he's, he, not, he's not been in the hot seat yet. What this means is he honestly thought in his brain that if it could be traced, the cops would have said, yeah, don't send us a floppy disk because we'll be able to figure out who you yeah, are. that's what he probably thought. Because cops can't. Either you feel they can't lie or they don't lie. God, dude. Idiot. But, but he's never had any interaction with the police. I know, but it, it, it's just, it's crazy. It's not like he was a career criminal and, you know, and then all of a sudden he becomes a serial killer. You know, where he had a lot of interaction with cops lying to him and, you know. Still. I mean, it's like saying, oh, oh no, no charge is going to be, be, be held against you. And then you end up charging somebody. <sighs> I'm sorry. I mean to go off on a thing. Oh, no, no. It's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's crazy. I get it. Police found metadata embedded in a deleted Microsoft Word document that was unknown to Raider, still stored on the floppy disk. Uh, the metadata contained the words Christ Lutheran Church, and the, the document was marked as last modified by Dennis. Uh, an internet search determined that a Dennis Raider was president of the church council. When investigators drove by Raider's house, a black Jeep Cherokee, the type of vehicle seen in the Home Depot surveillance footage, was parked outside. Um, this strong circumstantial evidence against Raider, obviously strong circumstantial evidence. Yes. Uh, but they needed more direct evidence to detain him. So prosecutors wanted more. So police obtained a warrant to test uh, a pap smear taken from Raider's daughter at the Kansas State University Medical Clinic. DNA test showed a familiar, a fa famil, famil, uh, I always say it wrong, familial, familial match between the pap smear and a sample of, uh, from uh, Wordley's fingernails. Dude. Uh, this indicated that the killer was closely related to Raider's daughter and combined with the other evidence was enough for police to arrest him. 
Yeah, that family stuff they do, that new family DNA way of testing things, man. That's... Can you imagine being the detectives on this case when he sent that floppy disk? Oh, dude, I'd be, uh, I'd be, I'd be just celebrating. There'd have been, yeah, like, <laughs> I feel like this is going to be the best case. I just imagine them like, what? <laughs> and I'm sorry to stay stuck on this. This is just, it's oh, too I'm, crazy. Oh, it is. So you get this message from you're the detective. I want everyone out there to envision this. You're a police detective working the BTK case, and a lot of it's gone cold, mm -hmm. right? And this dumbass sends you a note that says. If I put information on a floppy disk, can you trace it? I imagine the conversation in the detectives bureau being like, is he really yeah. like, he's really asking that. And they're like, well, we'll see what Let's happens. Say no, see what happens. Okay. And then they're like, they yeah. put the thing in the paper. Uh, no, we can't trace floppy disks. And the whole time they're like, he is, this isn't, this isn't like a real thing, right? This isn't happening right now. Yeah. And then the next thing you get in the mail is an envelope with a floppy disk. Mm hmm. Dude, party. Yeah. Party exactly. time yeah, at the party Detective time. Bureau. Yeah. Like, that is... Yeah, some promotions coming out of that one. Good Lord. Yep. I, what a... I mean, I get it. It's a new technology. It is. But still, after being so careful for so many years... Why, it, why didn't you just shut up and stay at home and leave it alone? Why did it have to go on a floppy disk? Why didn't push that envelope? And if you really wanted to push it, like I said, why didn't you ask anyone else well, that has no idea why you're asking... What can be stored on there and stuff? Well, he doesn't want to write it anymore. He'd rather he'd rather type it. I know, but that this is like, I, I it, it, yeah, idiot. Yep, doesn't understand the digital world he's living in. Mm. Uh, Raider Raider was arrested while driving near his home in Park City shortly after noon on February twenty fifth, two thousand five. An officer an officer asked Mister Raider, "Do you know why you're going downtown?" And Raider replied, oh, I have suspicions. Why? So he knows why. I mean, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I have suspicions as to why. I have why. a pretty good idea why you're wanting to talk to me yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I think I know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Wichita Police, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, and ATF agents searched Raider's home and vehicle, seizing evidence including computer equipment, a pair of black pantyhose retrieved from a shed, and a cylindrical container. Um, the church he attended, his office at City Hall, and the main branch of the Park City Library were also searched. Yep. So, I mean, he still employed at all these places. Yeah. At a press conference the next morning, Wichita Police Chief Norman Williams announced the bottom line, BTK is arrested. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty plain and simple. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on, uh, legal proceedings. Uh, on February 28, 2005, Raider was charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder. Uh, soon after his arrest, the Associated Press cited an anonymous source alleging that Raider had confessed to two other murders, two other murders in addition to, the, uh, to those with which he had been connected. Okay. Um, however, the Sedgwick County District Attorney denied the story, yet refused to say whether Raider has made any confessions or if investigators were looking into Raider's possible involvement in more unsolved killings. Okay. Um, on March 5th, news sources claimed to have uh, verified by multiple sources that Raider had confessed to the 10 murders he was charged with, but no other ones. So he only confessed to 10. Okay. And that's what they're going to nail him for. Yeah. Um, on March 1, uh, Raider's bail was set at U at a. $10 million U.S. Oh, yeah. He ain't getting out. Yeah, he, yeah we ain't let him go to work. And a public defender was appointed to represent him. Dude, that sucks. That's sad. For him. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I like it. Well, I think it's but, great. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you're looking at a case, there's all this evidence and, uh, and confessions. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there's not really much to defend there. Yeah. And his wife ain't got to pay for no attorney. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on May 3rd, the judge entered a uh, not guilty pleas on Raider's behalf, as Raider did not speak at his arraignment. Okay. However, on June 27th, the scheduled trial date, Raider can changed his plea to guilty. Okay, so he actually pled guilty. Yeah. Okay. Well, because maybe he was hoping it would take the death penalty out of it. Oh, maybe that if could he be. Confessed. Um. He described um, he described the murders in detail and made no apologies. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, at Raider's August 18th sentencing, victims' families made statements, after which Raider apologized in a rambling 30-minute monologue. The guy actually prepared a monologue. She, a 30-minute monologue. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, that he that he presented uh, that the prosecutor likened to an Academy Awards acceptance speech. Oh, so they were making fun of this thirty minute monologue. Well, I mean, he made he made it out to be like he was he received an Academy Award, right? So he's given one of those kind of spiels, right? You know, I want to thank God, and my family, and you know, whatever. Yeah. Oh. Um, his statement had been described as an example of an often observed phenomenon among psychopaths: their inability to understand the emotional content language or the content of language. He was sentenced to 10 consecutive life sentences with a minimum of 175 years. Oh, yeah. He's rotten. Yeah. 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 Kansas had no death penalty at the time of the murders. And then on August 19th, he was moved to El, Dor- El Dorado Correctional Facility. Yeah. Yep. You know, the only thing I know about El Dorado was, uh, was a movie made of, called El Dorado. Okay. The Western. No, no connection to no, no. what we're talking no, no, about. No connection to this. Okay. I just, it hit me in the head. I'm like, El Dorado, I'm starting singing this song. It's a Dean Martin, uh, John Wayne movie. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. Before my time. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, before my time, actually. Yeah. Uh, Raider talked about innocuous topics such as the weather during the 40-minute drive to El Dorado, but began to cry when the victim's family statements from the court proceedings came on the radio. He is now in solitary confinement for his protection with one hour of exercise per day, uh, three shower uh, and showers three times a week. This will likely inf- and definitely um, beginning in 2006. He was all, uh, allowed access to television and radio to read magazines and other privileges for good behavior. So he didn't have any money. Right. So he has to earn. There's no commissary going yeah, on there. He has to, well, he has to earn it all. Right. Through good behavior. Yeah. So, you know, you do two, whatever the time frame goes, you get you probably get so much for commissary yeah. or whatever. But he's that, been solitary all this time. And that is the BT, BTK BT. killer. I did want to include, uh, this is a mug shot um, not long after his incarceration. And we're going to compare that now to this photo. This is a 2023 mug shot taken uh, at the prison there, you know, an updated yeah, it shows, photo. shows you what jail does to you. Yeah. But this is, that's the most, uh, recent photo of BTK is this mugshot from 2023. Yep. Yeah. He's not fair and well, not fair and well at all. No, he's not. You know what time it is? What time is it? And I got bad news, Mike. We don't have anybody play Will of Death. I'm sorry. We don't. Have, no one else has signed up. We've played through everyone that all, has signed all up. All these people that have watched the sh- last show. I know. Nobody. Not one person said, "Hey, yeah, I want to play." No. We haven't anybody else signed up. We've gone. We've literally gone through every contestant that has signed up. So we need more people to sign up. Can so, I play? So you do you want to play? Sure. Do, I'll be a contestant. <laughs> will you? Yeah. You just want free shit. Well, <laughs> maybe. A little bit. A little bit. But this is our opportunity to implore people. Please. To sign up. Please sign up. So visit to murdermorons.com. You'll see a little wheel of death there that says sign up here. Yeah, sign up. Click that. You just your name, phone number, email, and we will put uh put your name here in the bucket of doom. Yep. And every episode when we have people to play. I'll pick one out. Yeah, Mike picks a, a name out, and then uh, we'll play the wheel. And, and we don't, you don't necessarily have to be on the video. Oh, uh, we're backing off of this now? Well, obviously, I think some people are kind of don't want to be on it. You think so? Mm-hmm. They can. So you're okay with just doing a call and just having the audio of their voice? We could. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know what else to do. I know, because uh, you're, what you're saying is you're afraid that some people aren't signing up because they don't want video of themselves on the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll open it up then. If you sign up from this moment forward, if we draw your name and we reach out and contact you, we'll ask you, do you want the video? You want to do video or you just want to do the voice? We'll give them the option. Maybe yeah. that'll help people sign up if they know they don't have to be. Yeah, maybe. I'm just kind of thinking. Maybe. Jumbotron. I'm just going to see how it goes. Yeah, let's see what happens. 
So again, visit visit our website. If you're watching, the QR code is there on your screen. Just yep. give that a scan. It'll take you straight to the sign-up form. Yeah, and please play because uh, I like playing. Yeah, we love playing. I'm on a, a good on a good track right now. Yeah, he's got, he's got a streak going. Yep. Also, if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the show, head over to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons. There you can simply buy Mike and I a coffee or you can become one of our members. Be a member. Yeah, and that comes with... All kinds of bonuses. Bonus episodes. Yes. So our members get a bonus episode every other Friday. Um, there's also different levels and different uh, levels of recognition. So Correct. like if you notice at the top of the show, you saw a list of executive producers. Those are our kind of big tier members that have signed up and are supporting. We thank them again. No, for tremendously, support. tremendously. Um, but yeah, if, if you're into that kind of thing and you want to help us out, play and start a little three bucks a month. Or like I said, you could just, just do a just, one time, yeah, one time buy, buy a coffee yeah. type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can visit uh, buymeacoffee.com or scan the QR code on your screen. Also, we got to talk about merch. Merch. Oh, yeah. Tons, that's another way to support the show. If you're yeah. not into doing, you know, the membership buy a shirt. thing, buy a shirt, buy a hat, yeah. buy some underwear. It's a nice, nice gift to give for Christmas, birthdays, yeah. whatever. Especially you or know just, somebody. Yeah. You and your spouse watch the show together. You want to get them a little something, yeah, something. a little something, something. You know, the show. Yeah. check out our merch store. Again, tumormorons.com or slash, slash, the slash, code? slash, scan, scan. Wow, that murder slash. I'm in the brain. You're, yep, you're out. Scan the QR code on your screen. We got anything else going on? Mm. Here's here's what's funny, Mike. I have messed up so many times. We'll show the um, the error board here mm-hmm. now I'm, as I'm saying this. I have screwed up not doing our little we're a video podcast thing so yeah. many times that I've actually in my notes here I have if you're listening to our podcast right now I put it again in the end so I could catch it if I didn't do it in the beginning. Okay. You didn't catch did you do it in the beginning? Yeah, I did it in the beginning. Oh, Remember, yeah, I was yeah. like right off the bat. Right off I'm the not going to forget this time. We're yep. doing doing our little I mean you did the intro on the first go. First Usually try. it's like 10 times or something. It is. Cuz you can't stop laughing. Yeah. We need to. We need. I need to make a gag reel. Is what needs to happen. Yeah, because people don't realize how much we mess up on it. How edited. Yeah, this edit, show edit. is. <laughs> edit the yeah, number. Edit. That's what we do. A little behind the scenes here for you. That's when we're talking. If one of us has to cough or we lose our spot or whatever, we just so when we're editing it later, we always edit, edit. so we catch it. You know, we probably say edit what. Ten times a show minimum. Quite a bit, yeah. Especially when you give out like personal information you didn't mean to give out. Yeah. yeah. Why do you keep giving out your birthday? I have no idea. It's not thinking, dude. <laughs> I'm just thinking like only my friends are listening and they all know. Right. Yeah. Well, that'll get beeped again. Yep. I do have to say that I forget what episode that was. Where I I think I had to beep you saying your birthday five times on that episode. Yeah. Because even after I called you out. I still did it. You went back into reading the story and read the date that we were talking about again. So I had to beep that date out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Woof. I, I give, I don't know, it is what it is. We're a hot mess sometimes. We're morons. What are we supposed to say? Exactly. If I didn't do that, then people would be like, oh, those guys aren't morons. Right. It's a deal. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And somebody listening, I'd be like, that dumbass gave out his birth. Did his birth. What an hour. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. Next would be giving out his SSN number. <laughs> Shit. Yes. Crap. Um, another way, if you, a real quick, easy, free way to support the show right now, if you're still watching, if you stuck around, yep. give us a like, give us a subscribe, follow us. Yep. Uh, follow us on social media, and, and whoever and you guys that listened last time or, or watched the show this last time, you really did. You did what we asked. Oh yeah, because our, our numbers went up. Big. Yeah, our numbers shot up big so, time. So please, so please, please, please continue doing that for us. Yeah, it, it, it means a lot. Yeah, we really appreciate the likes and subscribes. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say before we head out? I think that's all right. Probably about it. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you on the next episode next Wednesday. See you guys. Thanks. Right. See you. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.